Okay, dear students, so I hope you all are doing good. This is Professor Varun. And in, with this video, I'm going to start the lecture series for the very famous topic, Theory of Relativity. And let's see if I am able to do the justice with this topic. This topic is going to be very confusing, very difficult indeed. And you have to promise me one thing that you will not be pulling your hair while I would be teaching and you will not jump out of your windows. <laughs> Other than that, everything is cool. No worries. Let's see. So we are going to start with a topic named frame of references the reference frame or frame of reference. So this topic is very basic topic. It was given by Newton. So uh, the theory starts with Newton way back in 1675. So he gave this theory, he called something which is called frame of reference. Now, what is this frame of reference? So we can read this definition. The frame of reference is the set of coordinate axis and a set of clock at every point in space. So this is not required. In this set, there's not accelerating and others. Anyways, let, let us now move to other definition. Try to understand what I'm telling you. Let us say there is a person sitting here um, who is like, let's say he's this is a person traveling in a train. So this train is now uh, like, this is the bogey I can say where the person is sitting. And there is another person sitting along with him. So if I ask you like whether the person sitting with you in the train is moving or not, so your answer will be that, okay, this person is, I think he's not moving at all because he is sitting with me and with respect to me, his position is not changing at all. So he was at the same location five minutes earlier and he is at the same location even now. And even in the next time, I probably believe that the person's X coordinate is not going to change. So I can clearly say that this person is at rest with respect to me. Isn't it? But what about a person who is standing here on the platform and I say that no, the train is actually moving with certain velocity V. So what will be this point of view of the person? Okay, so the second person who is standing on the platform who was probably not having money to purchase the ticket for the train. <laughs> from that point of view, he would be saying that I think those people like both of them, they have just gone. They are moving at a certain velocity. Indeed, no doubt about it. They are moving and they're going. So this person is saying that these two people, like both of them, they are moving with the same velocity as that of train, at least. And from your point of view, like there are two people sitting here, A and B. So the person A will say that, yes, person B is at rest with respect to me. So whether the person B is at rest or whether the person B is in motion, that depends on the person who is making the observation. So the person who is standing on the platform, let me call it person C. So that person C is also an observer and person A is also an observer. This observer is having a frame attached to himself. Attached to himself means like I'm talking from my point of view. So I will assume that there is a, there is a frame attached at my forehead. And I'm having a watch here to read everything and I'm watching everything and I'm giving observations. So I would be saying that, okay, fine. That person was standing at 10 meters away from me like now. And oh my God, now he has moved to 12 meters and the time is this. So I am recording the time and I'm recording his instantaneous position. But my position is not changing. Probably I'm sitting at the same location and I'm saying that, okay, this position is changing. So this B is now moving with certain velocity V. So this person is saying that, yes, this person is moving. The other person is saying it is at rest. This is called frame of reference. Try to understand. So the frame of reference is the set of coordinate axis. Number one, with respect to whom or with the help of which I am able to probably judge the exact location or position of the person B. And I'm able to tell you whether the person B is at rest or he's moving. So I am using one axis. So just to cut the uh, difficulties and to cut the crap, I can say I will not be consuming, uh, not be uh, using uh, the Y axis and Z axis. We would be talking only in the terms of X. So my X coordinate is varying. Okay. So this person is telling you two coordinates, X and B. 
Similarly, the frame of reference which is attached with A is also telling you about the X and T. You can call it X dash and T dash. Like X dash and T dash. Like what is the position of the person B with respect to person A. So A will say, I think he is sitting like one meter away from me. And uh, what is the time? He says that now he's sitting one meter away. And even five minutes afterwards, he's saying that he's still sitting at one meter away from me. So this is called frame of reference. So in other words, we can say that frame of reference is actually the observer with a frame of coordinate axis, all three, X, Y, and Z. But we will not be considering Y and Z just because we want to simplify our calculations. That is why we are considering only X axis. So that is a frame of coordinate axis and a clock or a watch to note the time, instantaneous time. Like I would be telling you about the position, instantaneous position instantaneously. That thing is called frame of reference. Probably I think I'm clear. So this is frame of reference. Very easy. Don't go into these clocks and all kind of thing. This is highly confusing. Don't even read that. So what happens is this is frame of reference. So Newton said that there are two frame of references. The first frame of reference is called inertial frame of reference. And the second one is known as non-inertial. Inertial frame of reference is when the frame of reference is either at rest or it moves with constant speed or constant velocity even even because the direction also cannot change so it is moving with a constant velocity it means like you moving with the constant speed in the same direction so either the frame of reference is moving constantly or the frame of reference is at rest then we call it inertial frame of reference so there is no acceleration happening, neither the for, for the like not for the frame of reference, by the way, the bodies might be accelerating, but the frame of reference is at rest or it is moving with a constant velocity. Like in our case, we can see here the person who is standing on the platform, that is the person C is a frame of reference at rest. And the person who is A is a frame of reference, inertial frame of reference, which is moving with constant velocity. But both frame of reference A and frame of reference C are inertial frame of references. Nobody of that is non-inertial frame of reference. Non-inertial frame of reference, it comes into picture when the frame of reference itself, like the observer is accelerating. I would be giving you more examples on it. One moment. Um, okay. Um, so you might be remembering that in the topic A3, when we were doing forces, you might have seen those videos we talked about a force which was named as pseudo force pseudo force so it was a force which was actually not acting on the body but the effect of force was observable like for example you are standing inside a bus the bus driver is applying the brake so brake is applied on the bus the force is applied on the bus not on you but you are instead falling in forward direction as if somebody pushed you from behind. So there is an effect of force, but the force is not there. So I am falling in front of you because bus is stopping, not because somebody is pushing me, but I am acting if somebody has pushed me. That force is called pseudo force. Now, every person who is sitting inside the bus is experiencing the acceleration, isn't it? Like the driver applies the brake and the person sitting there is now accelerating. He is now, uh, retarding or getting a, a push, uh, you know, like because of the acceleration. So his point of view is different. Like he is watching you. So his point of view will be including the acceleration also. So there comes a concept of pseudo force. Now, these kind of cases are not included in inertial frame of reference. So non inertial frame of reference is when the frame of reference itself is accelerating. I am not talking about the bodies 
that you are saying that that car is accelerating, this car is accelerating, the rocket is accelerating. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about the observer who is watching a car, but the car is not moving, but probably I am moving with an acceleration and I feel that car is going into the reverse direction with an acceleration. That is the pseudo force because the force is not acting on the car. It is acting on me actually. So that kind of a frame of reference when I am accelerating, when the frame of reference is accelerating is called non inertial frame of reference. So when I am accelerating, I won't experience my acceleration. I will feel that might be I am at complete rest. I am not moving at all. But on contrary, I will see that might be that the other car that I'm watching, that car is having an acceleration in the backward direction. So at that point, I am wrong in in observing things and in reporting things because I believe that that car is being acted upon by a force, but there is no force on that car. In fact, I am the one who is experiencing a force, but my point of view will be that I am at rest, but that car is experiencing an acceleration. Thereby, all the physics given by Newton is not valid there because force is acting on me, not on that person. So in the non inertial frame of reference, the Newton's laws are not valid. The Newton laws are not valid. But in the case of inertial frame of reference, all the Newton's laws like F physical to M into A action reaction and others, they all are valid and you can very well apply these Suat equations and everything. Although non inertial frame of references become very different different and we can say that the Newton's laws are not valid there, but still we have completed pseudo force cases in topic A3 when we were learning about the lift cases and the elevator cases. I have shown you the videos also from the Einstein from uh, the movie the genius you can search it on the YouTube channel the lift scene genius and you can watch that video and I've shown you another video of uh, the International Space Station where the very famous astronaut Sunita William is seen um, teaching you about the weightlessness in the space shuttle. So I have talked about the non inertial frame of references at that time. But here also from the theory, from the point of view of theory of relativity also we are doing the same thing. So these are the two frame of references. So in this video, this was all let me uh, consolidate each and everything. First of all, we want to learn like what is a frame of reference. So frame of reference is an observer and the observer is having some coordinate axis fitted with him and he's having a watch so that he can even uh, find your position with respect to time. So he is in a position to observe things and he is in a position to say which body is at rest and which body is moving. That is a frame of reference. Now frame of references can be like there can be one frame of reference. There can be the second frame of reference. Frame of reference means the point of views. Okay, so there are two types of uh, frame of references. Number one is inertial frame of reference. Number two is non inertial frame of reference. Inertial frame of reference. The frame of reference is either at rest or moving at constant speed and non inertial frame of reference is when the observer himself is having an acceleration, but the body he is watching is not. But he feels that he is at rest and the body is indeed having an acceleration. So that is a wrong observation which was conducted in a non inertial frame of reference. That is why this is actually not in our syllabus. And so you just need to know it. Okay, dear students. So this is the first lecture for theory of relativity. Please be with me with patience. There are a couple of things we are gradually moving towards the treasure, I would say. Okay, dear students, all the best. Bye.